Testament lesson for this, the celebration of our Lord's resurrection, is taken from the book of Exodus, the 15th chapter. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his armies he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. For the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congelled in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils, I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
awake very early in the morning. The women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A blessed Easter to you all, brothers and sisters in Christ. Alleluia, he is, a, he is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. On this great festival of our Lord's resurrection from the dead, let us examine Easter morning according to St. Luke's Gospel. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. That first Sunday, we see the women arise from their Sabbath rest and go to care for the body of our Lord. They head to the tomb in order to prepare his body for decomposition. The traditional way uh, that they dealt with the dead was to lay the body with spices in the tomb until the flesh had rotted away and only bones remained. Then the bones would be gathered together into a box called an ossuary, a bone box, and placed within a slot prepared for it in the wall of the tomb. The Hebrews had the practice of maintaining family tombs, with all the ossuaries gathered together as a family, awaiting the, rest of the final resurrection. Our Lord is laid in the tomb of uh, a new tomb, however. And David, speaking prophetically about our Lord in the 16th Psalm, writes, Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells Secure, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. The body of our Lord was not permitted to be rotted away or be eaten by insects, but was preserved within the tomb those days. Our Lord rested on the seventh day from all his labors. Preserved by God that Sabbath day, uh, just as Israel would be preserved if they had kept the Sabbath as they ought to. And the women, the women approach the tomb to prepare the body for what they think is his final rest. Luke continues. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? The women are greeted by two men who are about to announce the resurrection to them. Luke emphasizes here that there were two who greeted the women. For Jesus' resurrection is here confirmed by the testimony of two witnesses. Just as uh, all testimony was required to be confirmed, under the law of Moses. You might have uh, noticed that each gospel writer has a slightly different account of the resurrection. And it's kind of a befuddling thing to try and fit it all together on a chronological timeline. But it suffice to say that each gospel writer includes the details that tie together the themes and ideas uh, and wrap up the account of our Lord's work and words that they are uh, writing for. Luke here in his gospel wants to focus upon the legal validity of the testimony of our Lord's resurrection. Two men 
uh, or likely, or rather, angels, uh, based upon the description of their appearance, their, their clothing gleaming like lightning. Uh, likely, one of the angels mentioned in Matthew, in Matthew's account, is one of these angels. Their, their testimony confirms to the women that our Lord has risen. Shortly after our gospel lesson uh, this morning, Jesus will appear to two men on the road to Emmaus. Witnesses of the resurrection in Luke's gospel go forth two by two, just like earlier how Jesus sent two by two uh, out forth to uh, cast out demons and work miracles in Luke 10. And much like Luke emphasizes the two witnesses to our Lord's dedication, Simeon and Anna. Luke kind of has a thing for twos, and there's a reason for that. He wants to focus on the legal validity of the testimony of our Lord's work, and especially his resurrection. The two men continue speaking to the women. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Jesus no longer dwells in a, a tomb locked away in Sheol or Hades, but rather has risen from the grave. The angels bring the glorious news to the women who are still shocked by the absence of his body in the grave. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ's sacrifice as the innocent, in, uh, as the innocent suffering in the place of us guilty sinners, has been accepted. Jesus has left the tomb, resurrected in the flesh. And we see here, Christ's resurrection is greater even than the resurrection of Lazarus. You might remember that Lazarus, once resurrected, will die again. But Christ, once resurrected, will never die again. It is this resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all Christians look forward to. We confess this in the creeds, especially the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the resurrection that we look forward to. A resurrection of the body and the eternal life to come living under the reign of Christ into eternity. This is the glorious hope of all Christians in Christ Jesus, who as our head has been, has, been, has died and has defeated death. We look forward to dwelling with Christ in the new creation, begun already in our Lord's ministry and resurrection, and fully inaugurated in the age to come. Then they remembered his words, his rights. The word of the Lord dwelt in these women's minds, and at the prompting of the angelic messengers, they were called the numerous times that our Lord had announced his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. They were emboldened by their memory of our Lord's word, as we ought to as well. This can't be underemphasized, the importance of treasuring our Lord's word within our own hearts and minds. This is one of the reasons that, as Lutherans, we have kept the treasure of the divine service. Because through it, we weekly, and uh, hopefully this week, and maybe even daily, have been reminded and reinforced in our knowledge and memory of our Lord's Word. This Word of God has the power to strengthen and encourage when we speak it to one another, and when we bring it to mind, and when we gather together to hear it. When we allow our own minds to dwell upon it, as we see it as the testimony of the whole scriptures. For example, in Psalm 1, we see the blessings of the man who delights in the scriptures and meditates upon them day and night. In Ephesians 5, Paul tells us about how the Psalms encourage us and our fellow Christians. In Hebrews 10, we heard on Monday Thursday about our individual responsibility as Christians to gather together to encourage one another and to exhort each other to good works. So let us continue doing that. The women go forth from the tomb to tell the disciples about the empty tomb 
and about the testimony of the two men. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. As our lesson comes to a close, we find a rather so sober reminder. A reminder of the reality of unbelief. There are those who hear the news of the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ on our behalf and for our salvation. And they will not believe, thinking it all nonsense. You've met these folks. I'm certain of it. While in St. Luke's Gospel, we see that the eleven are later convinced by Jesus appearing to them in the flesh. Many of our family members friends, and acquaintances, that won't happen for them. See, faith is a gift. It isn't something that's earned or achieved or, or even argued into. Rather, it's something given. And it's given through the Word of God, as St. Paul writes in Romans 10. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? And a little while later, faith comes from hearing the message. The message is heard through the word of Christ. The word we go out with this morning is the very message proclaimed to the women that morning by the angelic witnesses. He is not here. He is risen. It is this message which first brought you and I to faith. Is it not? The promise of our Lord is certain. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly be united with him in his resurrection. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.